because God has been too good. And, I'm, and I just pray that y'all all be encouraged, that we encourage one another, that we stand firm, hallelujah. And as the Lord continues to work on us, that we just love him and embrace where we're at. Because what we're telling him is, I love you in spite of. I love you unconditionally. I love you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. You are more than enough for me. Hallelujah. And at this time, I just pray again that you all be encouraged, embrace, praise, and just enjoy the season that you're in because you are saved. Hallelujah. And at this time, we'll turn this portion over to our leader. Did not our hearts burn? Amen. You see, it takes sometimes going through, amen, going through, being a single mother, amen, trying to get your masters, your AAs, your BAs, your masters, and struggling, and all of that is what makes you who you are, <laughs> amen, it is all of that, I'm learning what the Bible teaches, and I'm learning that it takes, it takes the disadvantages of life uh, to make us who we are supposed to be. I was reading in that book also about so many of the presidents and how that, including Barack Obama, you know, he doesn't have, you know, his father died early. And there was, they give you the statistics on it, uh, so many of them, how that the fathers were not present in the, ho present in the home uh, of the presidents. They grew up without fathers. And it was telling you how that the disadvantage became an advantage. Yes. You, know, so, you know what? If it doesn't kill you, it'll make you. <laughs> Come on. Some people may be traumatized, but the people who use that, who use it and don't become traumatized, go on to do great things. And so, and so, you know, either way, that's why I say there is really no advantages and no disadvantages in God. Because, you know, it was just saying that, that you know, that sometimes that the kids that grow up in the two-parent homes, they're in the structure. They keep them in a structure, and, and they never leave that structure. And so, but it says that the one-parent home, uh, they're, they're, the structure is not there, so the kids have to learn to survive different ways and so they will go on and they will step outside of the boundaries of the structure and if they do it the right way they will they will survive and not only survive but thrive and do great things <laughs> so there is really no disadvantage some of y'all think that you're raising your kids single parent and there is a disadvantage but it's not really not if you just keep them in the structure of God <laughs> and you keep them in the structure of God and they can do great things because once again, I thought about myself, you know, growing up without parents and growing up without parents and things. And, and you know, so it, 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 is it a disadvantage? Is it an advantage? It all depends on how you look at it. If you let things traumatize you, it becomes a disadvantage. But if you learn how to deal with things in God and learn how to deal with and make every disadvantage an advantage, come on, you can do great things in life. You can learn how to you learn how to think outside of the box sometimes. And so, amen, I was thinking as she was preaching, amen, and I see her ministry flourishing now. I see it beginning. I feel the anointing on that ministry. And amen, she's beginning to move it into another realm. All that trouble is pushing you into, instead of, put, instead of traumatizing you, it's pushing you into the anointing now. All that crying in the midnight hour, all that the faith on depend, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to make it, Come but on. you're calling on him. Yeah. It's pushing you into the anointing. Yeah. Don't let it traumatize you. Let it push you into the anointing. Yeah. Amen. I, that's why I tell you all again, I stay under that tree because you know what? The devil is not going to traumatize me. Because, you know, I tell people, I said, God is my partner. 
And you know what? I'm going to stay near God. And as long as I stay near God, make God my partner, I give him double what I'm supposed to give him. Amen. I give him double the finances. I give him double the time. I give him double whatever it is. Because, see, if the devil going to kill me, he got to come through Jesus anyway. And if he kills me or traumatizes me, he got to do it through Jesus. And if he traumatizes me through Jesus, then it's fine because it's something I need. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, the problem is, the problem is, amen, in this time, amen, I was thinking about Ecclesiastics uh, 3. To everything, there is a season. And every in, in, in a time to every purpose under the sun, realizing, realizing that whatever God is allowing us to go through, there's a purpose for it. There is a purpose. Look at somebody and say, there's a purpose for it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You may be sick, but there's a purpose for it. You may be tired, but there's a purpose for it. You may be broke, but there's a purpose for it. You may be lonely, but there's a purpose for it. There is a time to it, a purpose for it. God is allowing you to go through it because he wants to put an anointing on your life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. There is a purpose for it. Just very quickly, give me just a minute. It says a time to be born and a time to die. Oh God, I used to, I used to wonder why am I here? I used to wonder... <laughs> I used to wonder, why am I here? What is it all about? Looking up in the sky, looking at the stars and things, and wondering, what is this all about? <laughs> but when I met Jesus, oh, glory to God, I found out there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. If you are a gardener, you know that there's a planting season you cannot plant out of the planting season because you're not, your crop is not going to grow right. And then you know that there's a harvesting time. You got to cut it up and take it out in the harvesting time because if you don't, you're going you're gonna to miss your fruit. It's going to rot on the vine. Oh, glory to God. There is a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh. Amen. But in your season of weeping can you still praise God there's a purpose for your weeping there is a time and a purpose for it can you praise God can you lift him up can you magnify his name oh I got to quit there's a time your season Ecclesiastics sister Tasha gives us the 28 seasons of life and when we understand that that to every, every time there's a season for everything. There's a season and, and a time to get and, and a time to lose. Oh, glory to God. Sometimes we just want to get, 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 get. <laughs> Amen. But you know there's a time to lose. There's a time to lose. You got to lose some things in this life. Amen. Amen. Because, amen, there's a purpose for everything. You've got to know that God has a purpose for your life tonight. You've got to know that. And you've got to know that you've got to embrace every season. You've got to learn to embrace every season. When you win, embrace it. When you lose, embrace it. When you weep, embrace it. When you laugh, embrace it. When you're broke, embrace it. When you've got money, embrace it. Yeah, Lord. Woo! Let us stand. Glory to God. I see what God is doing, daughter. Hallelujah. I see what God is doing in your life. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what the songwriter said. He said, didn't I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> didn't I tell you it would be all right? <laughs> Amen. It's already all right. Amen. Amen. See, some, we have to go through these things. We have to go through this pressure. We have to go through this time and seasons of our lives Amen. In order to be who we are, I could never be who I am if it was not for the way that I came up. If it wasn't for, amen, being, amen, raised the way that I was raised and, and the hardship that I went through and, and all of the things that I went through and the things and the parents that I didn't have, I could not be me. I could not have the faith. I could not have the ministry that I have. 
And you can't be who you are without what you're going through tonight. <laughs> Lift your hands and begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Oh, you're going through tonight. I know you're going through. But embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace the season that you're in. Embrace the season that you're in. I told my children last night, I, man, I went to the little birthday party. I told them, I said, I'm in the last leg of the journey. But you know what? Amen. This is my last season, but I'm embracing it. Amen. This is my last season. This is the end of the last of the ministry for me. I said, you know what? I'm heading toward over the hill and up with Jesus. I said, but you know what? I'm embracing it. I'm enjoying it. Glory to God. I just want you to understand, to be happy. I want you to know where heaven is. Embrace whatever God is doing for you. Embrace it. Embrace it. And Brother Ricky and Sister Diane, embrace it in two weeks. Embrace the new life. Because the new life will come with its own set of problems. Amen. Amen. So embrace it. And amen. And there is a time, there's a purpose for everything. Glory to God as we bow our heads tonight. Amen, amen. In services like these, we are, I'm working with Brother John Jenkins. We are going to be bringing, trying to bring in Apostolic Assembly, some of these other churches on some of the Sunday nights once a month. And, uh, and so, but we need these nights to build our own ministry and ministers. We need these nights like, you know, some of these nights because I see what God is doing. See what God is doing. You know, we don't compare ourselves to anybody. Amen. We're not trying to make more numbers than anybody. But, you know, one thing I've learned in three quarters of the ministry that I've, I've had an opportunity to be in, what is important is to know that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing that you can have. Not a house full of folks that don't even know when they leave church, they're still smoking, drinking fornicating, you know, they're doing all these things. Uh, not, it's not, you know, that's not the whole thing that we need. What we need is, is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and to know, God, you bless me. Like Sister Tasha, you know what? Been broke, been lonely, I've been distressed, and, uh, but God, you've kept me. That's what's important. That's what's really important in life. So as we buy his tonight, Father, we thank you for the message and the messenger. We thank you for all of these that are here tonight. Lord, I know that every one of them are going through some things tonight. They're going through some things, whether they're married, whether they're single, whether they're divorced, whether they're widowed. They're going through some things tonight. But Lord, you have ordained these things to make them. You have ordained these things to make them who they will become. And they will become, Lord, if they stay with you, they will become great in you, Lord. They will be blessed, Lord, in all these things. And, oh, God, tonight, give our saints a season of prosperity. Give them a season of happiness. Give them a season of joy. Give them a season, oh, God, oh, God, of, of great love and abundance. Give them that season. And, oh, God, but also, Lord, Give them the season that makes us, oh God, the days of darkness, the days of loneliness, the days of trials. Oh God, in those days, still, oh God, like Joseph, you said in the word that you were with him even in prison. I'm glad, oh God. Oh God, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. We thank you tonight for your goodness, mercy, kindness. We thank you tonight for every trial and every tribulation. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.